What's good, baby Raider Dave? Straight out the Las Vegas Strip. We're getting ready for the fucking draft. Six, seven more weeks, I believe. Seven more weeks on the Las Vegas Strip. But anyway, we're going to get in depth on it. In this show, a little bit, I'm going to talk, give you my feelings about the Combine. Not only that, check us out Saturday, Hardcore's channel. Uh, should have more guests. We're going to get this thing going, baby. Raider Nation, I'll see you guys Saturday. Peace. Welcome back, yo. It's Saturday, March 7th in the year of 2020. We're going to dive into some talent evaluation talk. That's actually going down today on Hardcore Raiders channel. Check the link in the description. Hop on board. It's going to be a live stream at noon today, West Coast Pacific time. That's 3 o'clock if you're on the east. And um, we're going to be chopping up talent evaluations, all that. And there's going to be a stream of shows coming the next three Saturdays. So the 14th, the 21st. Um, he's setting up some lineups, so typically it's about five to six guests, um, and they run a couple hours long, so stay tuned for those. Um, those are lining up right now and pretty much on schedule, so do stay tuned for those. Um, as far as today, I'm just doing a small show today just to kind of crack into the day. I just got back from Vegas this week, had a blast, uh, probably one of my best times ever in Vegas, man. I really partied hard. Um, made good decisions, man, as far as like when to eat chips and salsa, when to kick the happy hour off, you know, what, you know, didn't catch any shows or anything, but, you know, hit up the, you know, saw Big Elvis, you know, at the piano bar and all that, just hanging out, drinking martinis, hitting the strip, rolled a little bit, you know, threw some dice here and there, played some slots, played in a slot tournament, it was fun, just fun stuff, just, you know, stayed going throughout the day, you know, it was just like, basically the way you want the time you want to have in vegas you know you get up and you just start hitting the strip and bar hopping and having a great old time and talking to people seeing what the city's feelings are you know how the locals feel about the raiders coming and stuff so gearing up man everybody's gearing up for the uh, nfl draft they're saying it's going to be bigger than their new year's events every year new year's is the big deal in vegas i've never been there for new year's i've been there for valentine's and other events and all that march madness all that stuff but Never for New Year's, but they're saying it's going to be bigger than New Year's uh, Eve. So, man, I'm looking forward to this draft. I will be there. That's for sure. Now, um, with that said, the Raiders moving to Vegas. So that's going to be kind of the the topic today, you know, in this short podcast is what are the who do the Raiders actually need to sign in for agency? Because I personally think you got to bring in a big name superstar. This is your brand. This is the new era in Vegas. You remember the Las Vegas Knights? They went to the Stanley Cup Finals. They're first season um and they are a hit in vegas you know i got off the freeway there's a car in front of me it's got the las vegas knights uh, license plate car to my right has a las vegas raiders license plate and it's got the you know first two letters start with al and then it has four digits i'm like okay they're already embracing the raiders they see the stadium the stadium is a big seller man it looks like another vegas on the left hand side already you know, with just one stadium there and then all the industrial bu- buildings. So it's looking sharp. So what I'm getting at is is this team is already embracing the Raiders, but they can't embrace a 4-12 and Raider team. They can't embrace a team that has no superstars. So that's my question. Who do the Raiders bring in this offseason to bring that excitement, the commitment, everything that we need to succeed in that city? Look at what Dana White's. Dana White's speaking out for a reason because he understands what's at stake here with an NFL football team in Las Vegas and the fact that Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback in the NFL, the greatest quarterback of all time pretty much, is available in free agency and he's only one year off of a Super Bowl victory. So, And who knows what's going on with New England there. There seems to be a disconnect when it comes to contract talks. Maybe he ends his career where he should. But if he doesn't, that's an opportunity. If he does not secure his his legacy in New England then the Raiders need to be a they need to be a player in that. You know, maybe they don't need to be the biggest spenders, but they need to think about their brand and I think they are. And as far as what that would bring to the Raider brand in Las Vegas, I know this is going not going to this is not going to be sit well with a lot of people. I get that, but this is the business aspect of the NFL. This isn't the need aspect. This isn't well, we need a wide receiver, or we need more weapons, or we need a defense. This isn't a this isn't football right now. This is we're not talking football. We're talking branding. We are talking business. We are talking being, and I'm going to say it like this. If this did happen, if the Raiders sign Tom Brady, they will be the richest NFL team in the NFL. They're going to be the richest team in the NFL. They will surpass the Cowboys in revenue 
pretty much can stamp a guarantee on that. I already think they're going to be top three, top five, no matter what, just be, just moving the brand to Las Vegas. But if they get Tom Brady, that changes everything from a business aspect. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. And um, so um, you can see my mock draft up, my mock draft up here, not too different from the uh, the past. Um, you know, the, 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 my past mock draft. And I'll get into that in a second. You know, I'm just going to cut through some news and notes uh, real quick. Now, the Raiders, they got some interest in Marcus Mariota, rightfully so. I mean, you do want to get Carr a viable backup. Marcus Mariota being the former number two overall pick in 2015. I remember him then. A lot of people like Marcus Mariota come out of college. Um, I liked him as well. There's a lot of things I like about him. Uh, this wouldn't be a bad move. He's young. I think 26, 27 years old. Um... He does have that experience, you know, the Tennessee Titans in, what, 2016 when the Raiders were pretty good. They had that 12-4 season. Marcus Mariota was competing ball in that year. Uh, so there's there could be something there. He's young. He's got the upside. Um, and you want competition at the quarterback position. We want a sense of urgency at the quarterback position. I've been saying that for the last couple of years. We need a, we need a clipboard guy. I know a lot of people laugh at that, but we need a clipboard guy, man. We need, we need urgency on the sideline, and, um, and we need competition, you know, so that way... If Carr is struggling, you might have to sit him and bring in a Mariota to take over a drive to see if that changes momentum, you know, things like that that take place during a game. So uh, thoughts on that one, but we'll see. You know, there's a lot of speculation right now. We're going to see exactly what lines up here in about a week. Uh, but also, Mike Mayock, you know, he discussed Josh Jacobs being more heavily involved in the passing game this coming season. A lot of it had to do with developmental, so that makes a lot of sense because that was one thing I was kind of questioning throughout the season. Like, like I've yet to really see Josh Jacobs as a receiver out of the backfield. I know they resigned Jalen Richard. You know, he's more of the primary receiver out of the backfield. Still think they need to add a uh, back in via draft or uh, get one here in free agency because, you know, the more, you know, you know DeAndre Washington, he's probably set to walk as, as expected. And, uh, you know, you definitely want to, you know, get that, you know, build that committee of backs, and who knows with, um, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Isaiah Crowell, man, who I was a fan of, he's only 27 years old, but the only thing with the Crowell is that Achilles, man, usually when you tear your Achilles, there's a lot of multiple injuries to follow with that one, we saw that with uh, Ronald Curry, you know, years ago, man, rolled up that Achilles, you know, within a year and a half, or two seasons later, you know, he rolls it up again, so, um, so, you know, thoughts on that as well, you know, but Josh Jacobs, man, going into his second year, you want to see that, 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 you know, more usage. And, you know, once again, I do view him as a 2000 all purpose yard back. So, uh, looking forward to that in 2020. And then, uh, and then with some other news, also the Raiders being rumored to be expected to sign Byron Jones from the Dallas Cowboys. He's set to be an unrestricted free agent as well. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a high. It's going to be a high price. The Philadelphia Eagles. They are heavily interested. I actually, I actually have them as the favorites, even though the Raiders do have Rod Marinelli, you know, on board. Um, but I, I just think that uh, I think the bidding war is going to get crazy for Byron Jones. I think Philadelphia is a serious contender. The Raiders are also a serious contender. But you know, once again, do you want to get in a crazy bidding war? And I just think he's more familiar with that division. But we'll, remains to be seen. The Raiders could could use Byron Jones. I know Trayvon Mullen, you know, he's lobbying for him on social media, you know, to come join the squad. Um, and let's get this let's get this defense built. Because cornerback, safety, those aren't my biggest weaknesses on this defense. I've said all along, linebacker's the biggest hole. You know, you can address this in the draft. You can be addressed in free agency. But linebacker is the biggest hole, and it is time for an overhaul. And, you know, that should help out this front seven tremendously so um but anyway thoughts on byron jones and uh speaking of the linebacker position uh linebacker will compton this is according this is through him that he's going to test the open market with still a chance to re-sign with the raiders now so with all that said you know it just remains to be seen if the raiders are going to be big spenders first things first i'm just going to kind of jump through my mock draft here as it's resetting here on the ticker all right, so I refreshed my ticker there. I'm going to close this thing out with my mock draft here. This is very similar to the mock draft, the top 20 that I showed you guys a couple weeks ago. Really hasn't changed much. I really haven't changed much. You're going to love me at number 12. Yeah, I'm reaching at number 12. I still got Isaiah Simmons falling to number 12, but 
here's my explanation right here, man. I'm going to lay it down like this. You already know Joe Burrow pretty much locked in to go to the Bengals. We'll see if anybody trades up. We shall see. Chase Young, pretty much the best player in the draft, locked in at number two. You can't pass on edge rusher. You can't pass on quarterback early on. You can't pass on cornerbacks in the NFL. You definitely cannot pass up the trenches as offense as it pertains to offensive tackle or getting a left tackle or right tackle, you name it, or a guy who can play guard or tackle. You got to take your uh, prospects, your blue chip prospects when it comes to the offensive line in the top 15, top 20. We saw the Raiders trade back to get Colton Miller. We've seen it, and he was projected possibly a second round pick. But I got Tua Tagovailoa, him going number five overall to the Dolphins now. Um, the Chargers, they've desperately needed offensive tackle help for the last couple years. The Panthers, I see Justin Herbert as a perfect fit in Carolina, man. If they keep Cam Newton, here's the guy to put behind him right here. Um, the Cardinals, they need that go-to wide receiver. C.D. Lamb being the best wide receiver in this draft. They get their guy at number eight, um, you know, to uh, assist with Kyler Murray, who they drafted last year. So Jaguars, they def def desperately need help inside at, at the defensive line position. So Derek Brown is your pick there. Um, in the top 10, Tristan Wirfs, man, what an impressive workout. What an impressive all-around, versatile offensive lineman. I think he's a perfect fit right there for the Browns. They need it. The Jets, I know. Everybody has him getting a linebacker or a wide receiver. They need help at, at, at the offensive line, and they got a young quarterback there as well. Now, here's my validation for Isaiah Simmons. I know I'm reaching, man. That 4-3-40 just got everybody off the charts. I'm going to explain that in a hot second here. Uh, Colts, man, Jordan Love's always been a perfect fit for me for the Colts. That's who I'm picking for in my uh, draft league that I'm playing in. I'm kind of locked in at Jordan Love right there at number 13, man. Um, now the Bucks, they're going to be definitely shoring up their defensive line. They typically do. I can kind of feel that coming with uh, Bruce Arians. Remains to be seen, though. This is very early still. Uh, we're still seven weeks away. The Broncos, they score here. They get freaking Jerry Judy, the wide receiver out of Alabama. to work with their young quarterback. And then perfect fit here in Atlanta. I think La, uh, LaVisca Chenault Jr., man. That's one of my, he's actually my favorite wide receiver in this draft if it wasn't for Henry Ruggs. Also the Cowboys, you know, we talked about uh, uh, Byron Jones leaving. You know, they get their corner right here that runs a 4-2-40. Maybe he's a nickel, maybe he's not. Um, and then you got the young Ed Rusher out of LSU, man. Still raw. Some teams might, I think teams are going to gamble and take him in the top 20. Now Henry Ruggs. That's my guy right there all around. We're going to get into that in a second here. And then the Jaguars, man, I think they score here with T. Higgins, man. T. Higgins is a hard one to pass up on at 19, but once again, I think Henry Ruggs, in, in my opinion, is the best wide receiver in, in this draft, and I know that a lot of people don't agree with that, um, but I'm going to stand behind my assessment, man. I just think he's the best player in this draft. I think he's a game changer. I think you're looking for playmakers um, I think this draft is loaded with playmakers at running back. I like the running back. I there are like six, seven running backs I love in this draft. There's about 10 wide receivers I love in this draft. Pretty much all of them. Uh, linebackers, man. I like all the linebackers pretty much in this draft going all the way through the mid rounds. Um, but I think Henry Ruggs, when it comes to playmakers, though, I had straight off the playmaker. When it comes to playmakers, I think Henry Ruggs is your guy that can bail out any quarterback. As long as that ball is delivered in his vicinity, he can catch balls behind him, up high. Um, he only had one dropped pass throughout his collegiate career. I know the numbers aren't crazy, what everybody's looking for. I know the routes aren't as polished as what everybody's looking for, which I didn't see. I think his route running is actually crisp. I think he's very fluid. Um, I think his breaks are freaking insane. I think his head fake's insane. I mean, there's just a lot of things I see from this player, man, where he gets space, and that's why you can throw that ball pretty much anywhere in the vicinity and let him make a play. I think if you run an end around or something with Henry Ruggs, man, I think you're 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 banking on a big play here. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm just like I said, game changing type speed. He can stop and go. He can change direction. I just there's just everything I like about this player. Now let me get into Isaiah Simmons here, the best linebacker in this draft. Fills a big need for the Raiders, 4-3-40. That, that shocked everybody. That caught everybody's guard. That made him automatically a top three, top five pick in a lot of mock drafts. But here's my thing. I just said it earlier, you know, and I know a lot of teams, like, I, I trust me, I was high on Roquan Smith in 2018. Roquan Smith went eighth overall when everybody was saying that he would probably fall out of the top ten. Um, 
And then you had uh, last year Devin White, man, who ran that 4-4 blazer for, out of LSU. Man, he went sixth overall. So linebackers do go high, but... And I know Isaiah Simmons is that special hybrid linebacker that the Raiders would be looking for to cover the tight ends in the middle of the field. Um, he just creates... If, if the Raiders got Isaiah Simmons, I think they're rolling with those two linebackers, four down defensive linemen, and the five defensive back. You know, they're going to run with that nickel 5-2. And, you know, so, so w what I'm saying is, is basically Isaiah Simmons is the perfect fit. I'm, I'm kind of praying for it to happen. Trust me, I, I'm trying to be as realistic as I possibly can because I'm not doing this at like joking around. Like, I'm serious. I think he could fall, man. And I think it's because of needs, and I'm going to lay it out like this. You can't find quarterbacks in the mid-rounds. It's very rare. You can't find defensive backs in the middle rounds, safeties. You know, it's rare. You know, you do find them, and you it's always the undrafted guy. You got a guy like Trent Brown, man, late undrafted guy that – ended up being one of the top free agents top paid free agents last year highest paid offensive tackle in football now then you have you know so so there's things like that that shake out but there's always going to be that like teams when it comes to building they're going to go for defensive tackle high in the top 20 they're going to go for edge rusher in the top 20 even if it's raw even if it's a player with raw upside you know, uh, this dra this draft is so deep at wide receiver that I have, f I believe, four wide receivers going in the top 20. So I think that's enough. That's plenty. And like I said, who's gonna who's gonna trade up? Because Philly's probably looking for a receiver. They might trade up. Uh, there's still a lot to remains to be seen here. But um, but yeah, that's my reach on Isaiah Simmons. I know I'm not putting the. Uh, let me tr let me try to dig deep. It's first thing in the morning. I'm having my coffee here. So uh, so let's just go through it, man. You got Joe. You got four quarterbacks, man. You know, some of these players, you know, like quarterbacks offensive tackles defensive tackles edge rushers these are foundational pieces on a roster i'm not discounting linebacker trust me i'm not discounting linebacker but just because isaiah simmons runs a 4 3 40 which is insane for his side what he's like 237 240 pounds he might have put on some weight for the, the combine i didn't catch all that but uh, 6 4 i mean this dude's massive running a 4 3 40 He's going to be able to hang and cover that range in the middle of the field. I like it. I like it. You know, he's, he can blitz. He can get after the quarterback. He is a special player. But once again, I don't think the Raiders need to trade up to get him. I think this could land right in their lap. It remains to be it I think he can land right in their lap. It remains to be seen. Um, so anyway, as a crazy uh, delusional Dave gets off on this Saturday, and you're going to probably be commenting here going, damn, dude, you're crazy to think that Isaiah Simmons is going to fall to 12. I don't know, man. I've seen crazy shit in the draft. We've all seen crazy stuff happen in the draft. Remains to be seen. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to get heavy into the discussion this afternoon. Stay tuned. I hope you all have a blessed day. I'm Raider Dave. This is Grimecast Media found here on YouTube. I'm out. Peace.